Hey folks, it is June 24, Wednesday. This is the Daily Word in the Crisis, and I am back after a day off. You know, America began as a nation that enslaved Africans. That's the bad side. It was wicked, it was sick, and it was wrong. So we could go on vilifying the whole nation for that original sin, and we'll never really change. Or we can take a different tack that might help heal some really very old wounds. I want to suggest that we ought not to forget the abolitionist movement of Christian white people who worked to end slavery, as well as the hundreds of thousands of Americans who fought and died in the Civil War on the side of the North to free those slaves. Emancipation began a process. It began a process of reformation and transformation that's taken generations to unfold and that's still going on. In modern times, I know that my children, straight-A students, found it really difficult to get scholarships for college as white kids until they realized that they could claim their membership in the Osage Nation. And then things opened up for them. All the scholarships were weighted in favor of minorities. And when I say that, I'm not complaining. This imbalance is our nation's way. It's been our nation's way of making restitution for hundreds of years of discrimination. The point is that we, the people of the United States, have been trying to do better. We've been trying to balance the scales. As a member of the Osage Nation from my father's side, I am acutely aware that genocide was perpetrated on the tribes of North America and that lands were taken and treaties were broken. I know that we're way past the point where lands can be given back. That's just not possible. Those wrongs can't be set right that way. But I also know that much has been done through legislation, through scholarships, and a lot more to bring reconciliation and to enable Native Americans to rise in honor and prosperity in this nation. Now, my point in saying all of this is to remind us that America is full of people and that all people are sinners without exception. Because we're sinners, all people groups are sinners without exception. Because we're sinners and because we've all fallen short of the glory of God, there will always be prejudice. There will always be injustice. There will always be forms of inequality between people in various ways. Until the day that Jesus returns, we will never achieve some mystical utopia where it all goes away. That's not humanly possible, although we have to keep trying. America is far from perfect, and we will remain far from perfect because it's, because, because it's full of people, and people are full of sin. But we're a nation that's come a very long way. Maybe it's time to stop fighting among ourselves and celebrate some of that. Maybe it's time to recognize that few nations in the history of the world have come so far and achieved so much as has this nation. And again, yes, change needs to happen. But as a pastor and as a counselor, for 44 years, I've learned that no one's heart was ever changed through condemnation. You change people by calling for repentance with the heart of Father God, who loves us beyond loving, and then, and then you affirm the good and you build that up. You build up the good until good overshadows evil and until light overcomes darkness. Hate never accomplished anything. Perhaps it's time for us in America to stop focusing on the shortcomings and the wickedness that's part of our history. Perhaps it's time to stop focusing on our very real systemic injustices as if they were the whole picture. We have to address them, but they're not the whole picture. We can't ignore them, but blindly focusing on them will change nobody's heart. It only feeds the cancer of hate that's rooted in anger and condemnation. Until hearts change, laws may change, but reality never will. Perhaps it's time to recognize that in less than a generation, we've brought down Jim Crow laws in the South. We've integrated our society, our schools, and our workplaces, and our neighborhoods. And we've passed laws that prohibit discrimination, that enforce equal opportunity. As a culture, within my lifetime, we've gone from judging and condemning interracial marriage to hardly giving it a second thought. I would estimate that of all the marriages I've performed over the last 15 or more years, 
at least half, were interracial. We've gone from African Americans being locked out of public office and denied positions of authority to a time when mayors of some of our major cities are black. We've, we've had a black president. Our current president's cabinet is mixed race, which is something no one seems to give him credit for. The president just appointed the first African American to head up a major branch of the military. Obviously, we want to be better, and we've made strides in that direction, although we often fail. Our founding fathers might have been slave owners, that's true, whose cultural conditioning blinded them to the full implications of the ideals they held and then wrote into the foundation of the nation, but they did set in motion a set of values and ideals of freedom for all of us that have driven the course of the nation since then. In the 244 years since the Declaration of Independence, we've moved ever more steadily toward a more complete realization of what they saw only in part when they wrote, and I quote, We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So they received it. They received it as a divine revelation from God, but they didn't realize the fullness of what they'd received. And before we condemn them for that, can we give some grace and be aware that there's never ever been a generation that realized that ever realized the full implications of the revelation they received? Witness the history of Israel. They were stewards entrusted, the chosen people, stewards entrusted with the revelation of the one true God for the whole world. Read the biblical record and you can see how they missed it over and over again. No generation and no nation has ever been any different or any better. We're all broken sinners who need the Savior, who's died to wash our sin clean, and who rose again to empower us to overcome and live with the Father in eternity. There is only one way out of the current crisis, should we choose it. The path is repentance for turning away from God and relying on our humanity to guide us through. Humanity will fail us. God will not. The answer to the current crisis will not be found in throwing rocks and bottles and burning buildings and tearing down historical monuments that remind us of our history. It won't be found in reacting to all of that with anger and judgment. We can get through this only by repenting of our failure to honor one another in love, whether it's fathers, mothers, authorities, or people of, uh, of another skin color. Where honor is given and where we begin to truly hear one another, healing follows. So I'll finish with this. This is Romans 12, and I'm starting at verse 9. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference. Give preference to one another in honor. That, that applies across the races and the ethnic, uh, the ethnic groups and all the others. Give preference to one another in honor. Not lagging behind in diligence. It's going to take work. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. Persevering in tribulation. Devoted to prayer contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same <clears throat> mind toward one another. Do not be haughty in mind, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's the rant for the day. Have a good one, people. God loves you. Bless you.